the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, Amen. who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgive me of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and but I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Lord. We pray that your grace may always go before and follow after us, that we may continually be given to all good works. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
and a large crowd. And when Jesus came near the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd from the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and said to her, Do not weep. Then he came and touched the open coffin, and those who carried him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say to you, Arise. So he who was dead sat up and began to speak. And Jesus presented him to his mother. Then fear came upon all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has risen up among us, and God has visited his people. And this report about Jesus went throughout all Judea and all the surrounding region. The Gospel of the Lord.
the Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I think I'm on safe ground to speculate that not one of us has ever attended a funeral that ended the way this funeral recorded in today's Holy Gospel ended. It was a big funeral. Many people came out to support this woman whose husband had already died, only now to lose her son, her only son, as well. A solemn procession was moving with the casket to the place of burial. But as that large crowd marched out the city gates, another big crowd was marching in, marching in behind Jesus. Interestingly, Jesus was also the son of a widow, the only child of that widow. But, unlike the son of the woman who lay dead on that bier being carried for burial, Jesus was also the only begotten son of God the Father. Jesus was the maker of all things, the maker of all people. So that death march towards the cemetery was interrupted by none other than the author and finisher of life. I, in all the funerals that I have ever performed, never told a grieving widow or a sobbing mother to stop crying. Jesus did. The translation that you heard of this gospel reading rendered it that Jesus indicated that this woman did not have to weep, but he actually literally told her, stop weeping. And for reasons that belong to him alone. For Jesus would certainly, as we heard, have great compassion on anyone losing a loved one, much less a widow losing her only son. And there is good reason to grieve for those of us who remain behind. The pain of separation from one we love. Even though we know it's a temporary separation that will be ended when we are together again in the eternal glory of paradise. Nonetheless, in this life, that pain is real and is hard. Jesus telling this woman was no indication that he had no compassion for her in her grief. Rather, it was in view of what Jesus was about to do for that grieving woman. I, as probably you have, have touched many caskets, even at times the bodies of those lying in the casket. But never did a single one respond to my touch. I have spoken at times to those lifeless bodies, but never did I dare say, Arise! Jesus did. And when his voice rang out, God's voice, saying, Young man, I say to you, arise. That dead young man immediately 
immediately sat up and began to speak, so that his mother's tears of grieving were turned into tears of joy. Why can't I do that? Why couldn't our funerals end that way? The obvious answer, of course, is that this was the eternal Son of God who spoke that life-giving word. But that answer is a little too simple. After all, in today's Holy or Old Testament reading, we heard about the prophet Elijah raising the only son of another widow, a Shunammite woman. Elijah's successor, Elijah, Elisha, did the very same thing. And in Acts chapter 9, we hear that St. Peter raised a woman named Dorcas from the dead. Mere men, sinners like you and me. But even though these men were used by God to raise the dead, it truly was God who did the raising, wasn't it? Not these men. As we see in the account of Elijah raising the son of that widow, he cried out to the Lord desperately a number of times, and we hear in that reading that the Lord heard his voice and responded. But that leaves still another question before us. If God was willing and able to do this for a few, why not for all of us? The Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, may have asked that very question herself. After all, Jesus allowed her to become a widow, and then, subsequently, to lose Jesus, her only son. The widow in this morning's gospel, as grief-stricken as she did, didn't even ask Jesus to do this. He just went over to her son and spoke and rose, raised that child. Why did God do this wonderful thing for her when she didn't even ask him to? When for others who have desperately begged him for help, for healing, for someone that they love, they died anyway. I've been doing a lot of organizing and sorting out in my basement and came across a number of the uh, school papers from elementary school that my parents amazingly kept. I, I couldn't believe how many of them were there. I, I think maybe they just wanted uh, to keep me humble years later when I look back at the awful work that I did back then. But in reading through these, it, uh, it made me all the more aware of just how little that I knew. I was a child. I mean, we're, we're all pretty much the same other than those rare geniuses who, uh, who have such knowledge and wisdom right off the bat. I relate this because In terms of asking why God does anything, we're always on shaky ground because we are always children in terms of our understanding of God's ways and God's reason. Always a little understanding and even smaller faith. Nonetheless, 
despite the darkness of our understanding, there are reasons that God sometimes reveals to us in the Holy Scripture. And then we are able to know why he has done what he does. If he has not revealed it in the Scripture, we dare not speculate why. We can't ask any of these individuals who God drew his prophets and God himself in the person of Jesus raised because not a single one of them is still around. Every single one of them eventually died again. That fact, the fact that they all died again, tells us something. It tells us that life in this world is not what we need. If it were, you can be sure that God would make that kind of resurrection, resurrection back to living in this fallen world, available to you. He could do that. We have seen it on a number of occasions recorded in the scriptures. But the key there is resurrection back to life in this fallen world. This world in its fallen state is not the life that God created for you to enjoy. Oh, of course, there are so many wonderful things that we have in this life and in this world. And as the scriptures say, every good and perfect gift comes down from God. And so, by his grace, there is much to enjoy about this life. But I don't have to tell you that this is not the perfect life that God created and desires for every one of us. Why then would he raise us back to live in this world when he has a life that is perfect in every respect waiting for us beyond this one? If resurrection to life in this world is not what you need, Why did Jesus raise some from the dead? These miracles were great signs. Signs that God is able to conquer death. When we encounter death, it looks impossible to us that anything can be done about it. But as we sing in the hymn, he has broken death's embrace and torn away its sting. These resurrections were a preview of that which is coming for all of us. Signs that there is a world and a life available to you greater than this world, greater than death. Signs that God is willing and able to give you that life. And he does. And he gives it to you, even by the hand of mere men, sinners like you. Sinners like me. For even though I can't raise a single body from a coffin, I am able to give you resurrection to life that never ends. Obviously not because of any power in me, not because of any quality in me. I am a poor, miserable sinner. But because God has called me into an office, 
that bears that very responsibility and has sent me to you for that one purpose. He has authorized and sent me to deliver into your ears and into your mouths the death and resurrection that conquers death forever. Jesus was able by his almighty power to raise men, women, and children back to life in this world, but only by this, only by his own death and resurrection is he able to raise men, women, and children to perfect and eternal life in his eternal kingdom, a kingdom not of this world. Jesus could have prevented his own death as he did on a number of occasions. He is Almighty God. But he would not prevent his own death, even when tempted to do so. Because only by that death could the payment for your sins be available to you and me. This payment and the resurrection that comes from receiving this payment is not just for a few randomly selected individuals across the span of history. This payment, the flesh and blood of God poured out on the cross, is available and is freely given right here and right now for us of little faith, for us of darkened understanding. The army of God, heaven itself, marches into this space Sunday after Sunday, just as Jesus marched into that city and met that funeral procession head on, so he marches in here and meets your sin and death head on, answering your death with his own death, pouring his life-giving word into your ears, and when we are able again, his life-giving flesh and blood into your flesh and blood. Because of this reality, it's no pipe dream, it is true. As I repeat so often our Lord's blessed word, he who eats and drinks, eats my body and drinks my blood, has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Because of this, I, a poor miserable sinner, am able to touch every casket at every funeral I perform, knowing that the Lord himself will touch that body, that the Lord himself will speak to that body on the final day, saying, young man or old man, young woman or old woman, arise. Arise to perfect life. Arise to perfect joy. Arise to eternal peace. There has never been a day in all the history of this world like that day that is coming. A day when all the dead in Christ will simultaneously hear his voice and arise to eternal life. Having that blessed hope and expectation, we can face death now with confidence in the midst of our grief. St. Paul said, we don't grieve the way the rest of the world grieves. We grieve, but with confidence, knowing that this last enemy, death, has been conquered by Christ forevermore. Thanks be to God. In the name Amen. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding guards your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus.
Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. Almighty God, we give thanks for all your goodness and bless you for the love that sustains us every day. We praise you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. We thank you for God the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, for your Holy Church, for the means of grace, for the lives of all faithful and just people, and for the hope of the life to come. Help us to treasure in our hearts all that you have done for us and enable us to show our thankfulness in lives that are wholly given to your servants. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Save and defend your whole church purchased with the precious blood of Christ. Strengthen your faithful people through the word and holy sacraments, making them perfect in love and in all good works and establishing in them the faith once delivered to the saints. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant your wisdom and heavenly grace to all pastors and to all who hold office in your church, that by their devoted service faith may abound and your kingdom increase. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send the light of your truth into all the earth. Raise up faithful servants of Christ to advance the gospel both at home and in distant lands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Preserve our nation, O Lord, in justice and honor, that we may lead a peaceable life with integrity. Grant health and favor to all who bear office in our land, especially our president and Congress, governor and legis legislature, and all those who make and minister and judge our laws. Help them to serve according to your holy will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Take away from us all hatred and prejudice. Give us the spirit of love and order our days in your peace. Prosper the labor of those who work to bring peace and justice to the nations of the world, that mutual understanding and common endeavor may be increased among all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless the schools of the church, all colleges, universities, and centers of research, our seminaries, as well as all of our public schools. Be with and protect all of our teachers and our students. Keep them safe and grant them the ability to learn and grow. Grant your wisdom in such measure that people may serve you honorably in church and state and that our common life may be conformed to the ways of your truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sanctify our homes with your presence and bless them with joy. Keep our children in the covenant of their baptism and enable their parents to bring them up in lives of faith and devotion. Unite the members of all families in a spirit of affection and service that they may show your praise in our land and in all the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let your blessings be upon the seed time and harvest, commerce and industry, leisure and rest, arts and culture of our people. Take under your special protection all those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and be with all those who put their hands to any useful task, giving them the just rewards for their labor and the knowledge that their work is a blessing in your sight. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. By your word and Holy Spirit, comfort all those who are in any sorrow or need, sickness or adversity. We pray especially for those known to us and of our parish, including Hilda Lane, Roger Winkler, Jennifer Carr, Donald Delida, Jeff Denty, Vicki Brooks, Suzanne Delida, Agnes Topkin, Tammy Kebby, Fred Shaw, Jackie Wheeler, Larry Bodiani, and Eric Brillhart. Be with these, your dear children, O Lord, in their affliction. Pour out your strength and your mercy upon them, and if it is your will, O Lord, provide your blessed gift of healing. 
Have mercy on all those to whom death is drawing near. Bring consolation to those who are in sorrow, and grant all a measure of your love, taking them into your tender care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, give us great grace to trust you during this time of great illness and distress in our nation and in our world. In mercy, put an end to the pandemic. Grant relief to all who are suffering and give comfort to all who mourn. Sustain and protect all medical personnel in their labors and cause your people always to serve you in righteousness and holiness, bringing hope and healing that we may find relief and restoration. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, visit our jails and prisons with your justice and mercy. Remember and help all prisoners, especially Wade. Bring the guilty to repent and amend their lives and give them hope for their future. When any are held unjustly, bring them release. Give them all patience and trust in you under affliction. Protect all those who work in these institutions and help them to be honorable, humane, and compassionate. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers and for granting us a shepherd, Pastor Timothy Stork, to guide us in the paths of righteousness. Be with him and his wife, Sarah, as they complete their preparations and move here to Michigan. Protect them and keep them and their belongings safe in travel. Help us to await with joy his arrival. Bless his ministry among us and grant that we may always be willing to hear the voice of your servant speaking in your name, that he may joyfully carry out his ministry here to your glory and for our welfare. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember with thanksgiving, O Lord, all those who have loved and served you in your church on earth who are now in, at rest from their labors. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints and bring us with them at last to the joys of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy name is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Countenance upon you and give.